self-described panel. And so uh, just put on the screen our names so that when you address the question to us that you know to whom you can address it. And we have some suggestions for uh, possible, uh, hopefully controversial topics that we could discuss. Uh, if you from the audience have other suggestions what we could address or not to order or priorities, uh, raise your hand or yell. I uh, would like to see maybe a comparison between different systems on rather high levels. Uh, my first question would be to describe various systems in terms of their capabilities of round trip engineering. Comparison of the systems. And round trip engineering is just one of those questions. Just another question you can throw in. Back in 2005, in the design discussions, I threw in the discussion of handling collection, the collection class hierarchy inside the uh, meta, inside a metadata hierarchy. Now, people may feel that was talked to death in 2005, but I'd be very happy to get the panel's take on that, or simply a summary of how their systems do it. Um, fitting the collection hierarchy into a metadata framework. but we think it's also a very bad style to modify something that's generated. So, uh, if you generate codes, you should keep your hands off it and uh, or change it and highlight more. Usually there's some way to um, uh, integrate uh, handwritten code because uh, usually you cannot uh, generate 100%. So we use subclasses or something like that. And then we start to get you in and get to the those are both techniques that you could use to weave in uh, somehow uh, the handwritten code. Uh, what you also could do is uh, at the meta level try to uh, establish this integration and then just uh, take the handwritten code as input to the transformation process. So that the generator basically performs the weaving. I already have something to comment on what you said. I mean, when, it just, when you say you generate the code and then you would update, you generate the code and it should update the source. That just reminds me of the lenses and the boomerang or harmony language. The lenses are kind of two way transformations. Can you um, please fit? You can just fit. Well, the lenses are a way to formalize reversible transformations. Yeah. Uh, so, but itself already says that it's less expressive than arbitrary So you cannot do everything with lenses. So first it's harder because you have to stick with the lens uh, framework. And secondly, you can't express uh, everything. It's the same with uh, updatable views in databases. So you can do query and you can update some stuff, but it doesn't always work. And uh, our transformation language is Turing complete. So I have two 
answers, depending if I understand the question correctly. Well, first of all, the same as with Thijs, we have the descriptions that generate the code. So if you change the code, the descriptions won't be changed. I mean, that's round trip engineering. And also, funny, I mean, it's funny that they uh, uh, make the descriptions during the Also, the description is completely regenerated. Trip, for example, if we make another field, we have a user interface, application code, and database. I also tried to talk, maybe that's the question you are asking. Okay. Maybe I should clarify that. One of the aspects of looking at it, how far can you retrofit your models on top of the software? And then you already need something either manually or mechanically in the first step. So we only have one for each project, well, actually, three. I was just wondering about Magritte. Um, when the user adds the to-do field, which goes in a dictionary, later on, of course, you might decide, I really want that field, so I'm going to make it an inst var and have Magritte describing that inst var. Um, so that would presumably be the round tripping, which presumably yeah. would be done by hand at the moment. Yeah, exactly. If you want to make that a native field, yeah. Yeah. you would need to write the visit to that box on the description and serialize it to the small button. Yeah, and presumably that would be a, do, uh, a quite doable thing. I mean, I'm assuming yeah. it's not done, but I mean, to map those fields into instvars and to serialize into small talk code the Magritte objects for them. Yeah. That should be very easy. Yeah. I've never done that, though. Yeah. yeah. I will choose the slide. Sorry, feature not implementable. <laughs> <laughs> slide. No, I. I uh, was quite from the beginning against code generation. Also, it's technically possible. Um, basically, because I implemented essentially, so Mavi came from Peer, from Peer Content Management System. And I made some comparison in the execution speed. And the predecessor of Peer was SmallWiki, which essentially implemented the same functionality but without any meta model, it hard coded everything. So all the fields were just statically set, the, the GUI rendering was statically set. And I set up a scenario where they were same each exactly, and I run some benchmarks on, on those systems. And here is only 30% uh, slower, even so it uses the full reflective and meta description system of one. So I thought that's not worth the trouble to generate code, but but certainly in Magritte, I mean, I've seen the same thing in Glorp, that the active Glorp actually creates objects, but of course it, nothing is more straightforward than to you know, change it via the web and so on in much the way you would with Magritte and then say, all right, well, I, would now want to, I now want to put that back into my code, please, because that's actually my correction to my system. So you know, if I wrote the original in code, why would I want the corrections in code? And you just do that. And yeah. it, it serializes out the method, and it's just it's as if you'd gone and edited your method and changed it. Co code generation becomes interesting. I mean, uh, yeah, it's kind of the same as it is in Smalltalk. 
And of course, the Java version cannot generate classes at runtime. So I simulate everything with hash cases. Mm. And as long as you have a fully meta-described application, where you only work by uh, <coughs> the whole, uh, met using the whole meta machinery, it does not matter where you generate code or not. But as soon as you want to mix some meta-run code with some handwritten code, yeah. then there must be met methods for that. I mean, that's the other. The otherwise, you just have to access some of the So <coughs> when you mix code with handwritten code, then code generation becomes important. And yeah. otherwise, what's the difference between a smaller class and an hash table? But that's often where the actual application value comes because your meta solution is great for part of it, but solving the full meta problem is really hard. So if you're, if you're in a real world application, you've got to be producing some of that hand code. That answers, answers the question very clearly. Um, I'd like to hear what everyone says. With fame, if you have a multi-valued property, it's obviously a collection. And at the moment, all collections are assumed to be ordered and are assumed to contain unique elements only. So it's actually ordered sets. It's just an assumption that we made and so far all banks have been happy with that. And uh, also the slots, they are actually a subclass of the collection that overrides add and remove. Because when you when you ask get get it for a multi-valued property, you get down a, get back an active collection and if you add and remove the the opposite end and then things up. This is solved through this uh, one to many description. Um, there is just two properties essentially one if it's ordered or not, and one if it's unique or not. And this sort of determines what what kind of collection it is. That's it. The same as in uh, EMS. Yes. Probably sort of inspired by that. So, I mean, would it be fair to say that in all cases you've gone for effectively re-implementing the hierarchy? You have to have a collection class that's a subclass of your meta class. No, I instantiate the normal slot of the collection. Ah, right, okay. And that's and that's living inside a completely generic Magritte object, yeah. not inside a collection specific Magritte yeah. object. But as I said in my presentation, it's in some cases also, the automatic building of user interfaces is quite starts to be quite complicated if there are complex relations between objects. So uh, often, I found myself to do that by hand. Okay. Do, do you see? Yeah. Do you see any connection between that and the fact that you were using normal collections rather than meta collections, rather than specialized? Okay, I'm interested because I mean, I, I, what Mathieu said is exactly what I was expecting to hear. I think that's a normal way to go when you start, but then you suddenly realize, hey, I've effectively duplicated the collection class hierarchy, and so one doesn't want to do that. So I'm just interested to know if anyone's found really good solutions for that. Yeah, and the new collection hierarchy is sort of not a real solution too. Because no, no, no. You, Far from, yeah, yeah. You also yeah. have maybe code that doesn't use your framework at all or should be aware of it. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You don't want to do that. Collection hierarchy would offer hooks for element removed and element added. I could yeah. just reuse it. Because actually that's what's missing. That's why I have my own subclass. Because I need to get in for <coughs> yeah. But your subclass is a subclass of collection. It's not a subclass of specific concrete subclasses of collection. No, no, it's just. Uh, yeah. No, it's a sub. I just subclass uh, order collection. Right. Okay. And do you subclass dictionary as well? No, I, we don't have any support for dictionaries. Today. Yeah. So that, that's what you mean. At the moment, you're you're just. That's one way to avoid the problem, just to say every order collection is of one kind, and then you get the best of both worlds. But, of course, you can't have uh, presumably dictionaries in your, in your meta system. Is this question here? I mean, 
what's the context of these uh, Madrid or Bain or also Euclid's? We have a different assumption, uh, no, we have a certain assumption, and those are saying more or less about the structure of the data. It's more or less it's re relational business data. And it's not like something complex data you know, that requires a special UI. It's just more often it's just tables that we fill in or forms that we fill in with some values that are linked to each other in some way. I mean, to, to fill in a form, I don't need a special UI. Yeah, I think that's also why the Magrid Seaside plugin is so successful because people can just add a field there and do the rest automatically or combine two forms in some ways. Uh, it's, I think, the surrounding thing that, that needs to be a powerful <coughs> as well to, be, to make it really useful yeah. and adaptive to, to the needs of your customers. Yeah, you also need a good word for the assumptions, right? When you start with MPA, you have to accept the assumptions that you need to log in, that you have contracts, etc. that's in blue, and then you only have to put in a few intentions, and it's there. But if it doesn't fit, you should do it. Okay, but you could do the frameworks, like, like uh, abstract it away into some components and just reuse them. <coughs> okay, a database is one argument. Okay, you have a, you have a uniform technology, so you, the easiest way to get a uniform UI for the uniform technology. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. It's also, of course, it's all the same, it's also very consistent. It helps people, all the customers, when we have a new uh, functionality. Hey, that's exactly that's what works in a lot of forms. There's so much uh, consistency. <coughs> it's not actually a feature, it's just only the way it can be. It's that way or no way. Yeah, I mean, this, I don't know how about your system, but at least the same or maybe it's not closed. You could always insert <coughs> somewhere in your own code. Yeah, you could exactly. just, for example, make a seaside page or just something that also accesses the same objects with the same many described objects and just it does make it in one out of hundred cases you need a custom UI. sitting in the same panel and claims that model-driven engineering design, architectural, domain driven is quite broad. Mm -hmm. We sit in the same channel with a lot of people who could sit in between of us. That's it one. Second, I think it was called the adaptive object model raised 10, 50, 20 years ago. I think it's much in common with what we are doing. We just need data information and then you have the capability of analyzing and restructuring and automating the things you're doing. Actually, image driven design is only Automating what some of the developers are doing. Like we actually, what we're trying to sell to uh, other companies are putting it on ourselves. Like, just like a bookkeeping system, you need data information about the bookkeeping, you don't do that in Word, just have data information about the source code, uh, descriptions. Is there something special about the model when implementing the self-described system? When you read the description of the framework, when you 
Python and Java, and it actually does exactly the same. So there's not some magic thing done by Fame that can only be done in Smalltalk. Of course, the Java version does not connect the meta models to classes, but to some hash models. But if you have a fully meta-driven application, it just works down the same. So the version of the Java does not have less features. Yeah, so for Marquette, I only see one single problem, and these are class extensions. So for example, you have them now in C-sharp, so that's not really an issue. You don't have them in Java yet, but it's not really. Uh, that's a problem if you want to need full extensibility. You really want to be able to extend uh, an object from a totally different package. Thank you.